I think that we should create the logo on a separate layer, so I'm simply going to create it in the Layers panel. I'm going to Alt-click on this new layer button right here, and I'm going to call it, uh, well, what it is, or what it will be, a logo, like that. But before we start, let me just point out one thing. I just wanted, wanted to caution about one thing. Sometimes companies can be quite strict about their policy on uh, like sharing or reproducing uh, their company logos. And if you don't want to, you know, if you are afraid that someone might, uh, you know, uh, might tell you that you are infringing some copyrights or something like that, it might be, you know, safer to just create a simple dot right here, white dot, and not to include the logo. However, for educational purposes, I think that it would be good if we just learned how to recreate this Xbox logo. So it would be like um, another piece of uh, design knowledge inside, inside this class. So I got a, I got a logo layer right here. And of course, I'm going to start with creating a simple ellipse. So I'm going to press L on the keyboard and just create an ellipse from the center by pressing both Alt and, and Shift on my keyboard and create a ellipse that would look something like that. I will exchange uh, the fill with the stroke by pressing Shift X on my keyboard. Okay, so in order to create this X symbol, we need to have these uh, these paths that we can then cut out from the underlying ellipse, right? So if you want to go with the pen tool, well, be my guest. If you want to do it with the pen tool, just go ahead. I, however, am going to use the arc tool because I because I like the arc tool and I think it's going to be a bit, a bit easier for us to create this kind of an arc with the arc tool. So with the arc tool, I'm simply going to press and click and drag to create an arc that is going to look more or less like this. And if you think that it doesn't look too good, you can always just grab it with the direct selection tool by an anchor point and maybe just move it a bit down to make it look something like that. Again, we could play around with this arc all day long, but I just, you know, I just want you to, to learn to understand the technique rather than I don't want you to spend a whole afternoon watching me clicking and adjusting every single path and every single direction handle. So once I have this path created, I'm just going to grab the width tool that sits right here in the tools panel. And by the way, if you don't know how the width tool works, I'd advise you to take a look at my every Adobe Illustrator class, uh, Liquify Tools um, class, where I explain how to use the width tool in, in greater detail. Now for now, I'm just going to grab the width tool and just click on my, ang uh, on my arc somewhere here and drag up. Let me just click on it and drag up till my arc is looks something like that. I would also just want to make these uh, paths, well, this um, well, this part of my um, arc just a bit narrower. So I'm simply going to zoom in and click and drag left to something like that. And I'm going to do the same with these guys. In this case, I'm just going to click and drag up to make it look something like so. Now, what I want to do right now is I want to, well, ultimately, I will, I am going to subtract this path from the underlying ellipse. However, I cannot do it if I still have a live effect applied to my path. So in order to make it, um, well, make it a static effect, so to speak, static path, I'm going to go to the object menu and choose expand appearance, which is, uh, which is um, kind of like reducing this, uh, this effect to a, to a static path. Let's put it like that. What I have to do right now is I have to make, well, create the other, the other path that is going to be on the, this right part of the X. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this guy in front. So by clicking first the control C and then control F on my keyboard. And now I can simply rotate it just like so. I'm going to hold down the shift key. And then let me just move it down. Maybe a bit up. Maybe even a bit up, maybe somewhere here. And maybe let me just reposition it ever so slightly. We could maybe exchange for a second and uh, with um, with the stroke and maybe bring this guy up, up a bit more. It will require a bit of tweaking. Something like that. Maybe let's try to align these guys. Just like so. Okay, let's, let's split hairs here. Let's leave it like that. So I'm going to grab this um, this path right here and I'm going to grab this path right here. So both these X paths and with the Pathfinder tool, I'm going to unite them just like so. So now I can grab it and I can grab the underlying path and I can subtract uh, this, uh, well, this top shape from the, uh, from the, from this top, well, from this uh, underlying ellipse. 
And as you can see, we created this kind of an FX look just like so. Of course, I would need it to be to have like uh, this uh, whitish, um, whitish uh, fill, and I don't have it. Don't, don't want to have it um, any stroke, like so. And if I just bring back my buttons and my base, and I just get rid of the image and zoom back out, you can see that we created the Xbox logo in just a matter of uh, in matter of minutes, actually. But again, um, some companies can have strict policies about reproducing their logo. So just remember that um, maybe in order to avoid uh, any like strange email from from some companies, uh, maybe it's better to just, um, you know, if you want, you could just include maybe your your initials right? instead of the X logo right here, or just a simple uh, just a simple dot here here on the top. So we almost have um, the Xbox controller created. And the only thing that's left to do is to create, let me just zoom back out, is to create this kind of a shading effect here in the bottom. And we are going to do that with the opacity mask. But this is something that we are going to do in the next video.